What's up everybody, this is Eric Nam, and I'm here to talk to you about a brand new, really cool, super trendy, all the insiders are doing it platform, and it's called Mindset. What is Mindset? Mindset by Dive Studios is a brand new platform where we have audio collections and boosters, right, from your favorite artists, including myself, and we go through our lives, and we go through the highs and lows, the struggles, the, the triumphs, there's going to be tears, there's going to be laughter, there's all sorts of emotions that you are going to get out of this Mindset application and and myself I'm doing it because I want to be able to impact listeners in a very positive way I want to share stories that are raw intimate vulnerable and honest um, about me with everybody else so that hopefully you guys feel heard and seen and understood in some way and and hopefully impacted in a positive way so you guys can check it out it's free to download you can go to get mindset get M-I-N-D-S-E-T dot com or go to your app store and type in Mindset by Dive Studios. It's free to download and you can start listening for free. It is free to start listening. So please check it out. Support the cause. We've worked really hard on it and I hope you absolutely love it. So I'll see you guys on the platform, getmindset.com. And uh, now back to your show. Bye. On this week's Nonsensible Podcast. When a guy has Nike tracksuit on with Nike socks and it's exposed, I think it's hot. And, and you, if you mix and match those, they look really whack. Like yeah. you kind of have to wear them as a set. Mm-hmm. I really want women to understand that they can or they are beautiful without all these things. This is nonsensical. Moving right along, uh, we. Oh, bless you, bless you. That was that was the cutest uh, sneeze I've heard in my life. That was adorable. Uh, that was a nice sneeze. Yeah, that was <laughs> very you. very cute. Uh, Great day. We are back with another episode of Nonsensible. I am Sam. Dave. Saul. Chummy. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome. Thanks back. for coming back. Thank Thanks for joining you. us again. Yeah. We, Did we, you bring me a hoodie this time? <laughs> they sold out. <laughs> they sold so, out. Ever okay. since then. I just her business wanted- blew up. <laughs> she has no product. After the last episode, just the the promotions from that episode alone, yeah. boom, like that. I, International sales through the roof. I lost Amazing. my are now worth yeah. $37 million. Wow. Speaking of stock rising quickly. Have you heard about GameStop? Mm, GameStop. Yeah. You like know the, the store the that store. sells video games. Uh-huh. Yeah. So a bunch of Redditors decided to jack the price of GameStop up. Everybody, when it made a collective effort, a bunch of memers on the internet made a collective effort, bought an ass ton of stock, of GameStop stock, Mm -hmm. and jumped it up from $20 to over $400. Oh my God. Within a week. And Elon Musk like tweeted about it and all this stuff. And there there was millions of dollars made. From. And the reason that there was so much money made is because you know what like shorting stocks is? Right, it's right, like right. when you bet against them. Uh-huh. So lots of like big Wall Street hedge funds, hedge funds were betting that it was going to fail soon. And so like when the stock rise up so much, like all of these hedge funds lost like billions of dollars. Right? And from that, That's people crazy. went and did the same thing for AMC, the movie theater. Uh-huh. Yeah. And is, is this illegal? I mean, or is it legal? No, it's not illegal. But, but that's where the controversy comes in because like Robinhood, which is like the most popular like app. stock app for like regular folks, they mm-hmm. say that's why it's mm-hmm. called like Robinhood. They actually like closed people's like ability to be able to buy the stock, stock anymore. Mm-hmm. So they like took the Wall Street guys so- side. Yeah. You know even what? though they were supposed to be for the people. Right. Yeah, it's pretty much government intervention for the big, you know… The corporations, you know, yeah. like, you know, you know, you know, you, mm. it's like, like for the corporate what? fat cats, yeah, corporate fat cats. It's pretty much Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. but in real life, on in Reddit. Mm. Do you know? Wow. Do you have you ever been on Reddit? I I've been on it uh, quite a few times, but it's not pretty fun. Frequent. Speaking of which, are there cool fashion Reddits? I actually don't know. You should know. So you just watch. <sighs> What were you on Reddit for then? Were you searching for yourself on Reddit by any chance? Actually, I don't think I'm that famous yet. You were? You, I don't at think one so. time. I'm sure if you search yourself on Google, you'll find one Reddit post about you at least. No. I'm no. sure you got some Reddit. No. You got Reddit credit. 
I'm sure you got some no. credit on Reddit. <laughs> you don't got credit on Reddit, forget it. Or at least you've had an edit. I'll forget it. Oh. <laughs> I'll forget it. Yeah, I don't oh. think so. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> you, you could start a rap career. <laughs> She's she gonna take, rapper. yeah. She's gonna take my spot on the podcast and take your rap job and take my rap job. Exactly. <laughs> do you need a new partner? Full time cook? Oh, no, no. I, I, I gotta she's do got this a, by she's, myself. She's got an F and B business. You could wait. You I'm can, sorry. What what do you do, Saul? I'm a rapper. Really? Yeah. I thought you were just kidding when you had Jay Park as like a Lego character. No, no. Ah, no, no. Yeah, he, we did a song together like really? two years ago. And what's your name is Saul? Yeah, but I um I was in a group. I'm in a group. It's kind of complicated because my partner left. But we're called Part Time Cooks. Yeah, and so well he feed, well we do cool. need a part time cook at uh, Court Cafe. Though. Yeah, and we. I also, you can start wrapping and serving them. You know, I, I'm. Our cafe I've been food. practicing the cooking a lot since I haven't had any concerts in over a year. <gasps> This dude, he he was also on TV and everything for his with his rap group and everything on Jay Park's show. Yeah. Uh, Did you see that sign, sign here? Show? Oh, yeah. I've heard about it. Yeah, we, but I we did pretty well it. on that. Yeah, really? semifinals. Were, yeah. What? Where did you end up? We were like the last team to get eliminated before the final. We didn't actually lose. Like we won the final, the semifinal, and we even had like already done a congratulatory speech. And then they like brought us out at 3.30 in the morning and we're like, will part-time cooks hop kill? Like, oh, will they advance to the next round? And we were like, we already did. What's happening? And then Jay, Jay was just like, yeah, um, All right. it's over. So this, so this guy, so the point of the show was the winner of the show gets signed to AOMG. Yeah. And this genius over here, he already has a label. Yeah. <laughs> But they asked us, they asked our label if we could be on the show. I think that they didn't think that we were going to do as well as we they, did. But they uh -huh. killed it. Because we had never really rapped in Korean. Like uh -huh. we did like a couple of lines in Korean before. But on this show, it was like an almost like entirely Korean thing. Really? It's just like we'll have the token white guy and the token yeah. black guy rap in Korean. And wow. Well, they didn't think we were actually going to rap in Korean. So, uh -huh. so they thought that we would just eventually get eliminated because of that. But we just spent like all day, every day writing raps in Korean wow. and… And we just kept like kind of winning. Like wow. we won like a lot of the a lot of the challenges. You guys were awesome. Yeah, it was really it was can, really fun. Can we get a few verse? Uh, uh, on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, come, come on. on. I'm shy only to, on only on Dance Studio. I've shy to rap like see, on the spot like that. When you ask. <laughs> I'll give you that gray sweater. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Dude. If, if I rap? Yeah. Okay, um, let me do it. Like, see, another, no, time. Okay. Do, do another time. Another time. Get out of here. Uh, uh, move on. I'm cringe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hit this. Yeah. I feel like it's so weird. He's an artist. Don't on the he doesn't have a beat on. He, yeah. he doesn't have a real mind. Are you ready to uh, beatbox with me? Are you, all right. <laughs> you go first. Not, not today. Please. <laughs> please don't. Yeah. Thank you. This is really if awesome. this was alcohol in my cup, maybe. But if it was alcohol in your cup, this, it, it'd be, this show would be going in a complete different direction. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've only, tried it before. Yeah, we've only done that once. That was a fun episode, though, right? When we drank on the show, yeah. she said no. Diane just immediately like said no. Why? What was wrong with it? We were a little bit emotional. A little too emotional. I didn't know Carhartt made uh, Converse. Those are cool. It's yeah. collaboration. It's collaboration. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. Carhartt's one of those only brands that can collab with just about anyone and it doesn't seem to be like too clashy, you know? You can have like a Nike Carhartt jacket. It works. Mm -hmm. These look cool. Yeah, but I think there's a, it's that's changing a lot in terms of fashion these days. I think even like you look at what Nike's doing. Nike right. collaborates with a lot of different… You know, Nike did that collaboration with Drake recently, mm. and that just like it blew it, it just walked out the door. Like you, yeah. you can't even get your hands on it. Look at what Supreme does. Yeah, Supreme, they do collaborations with like the most random brands. It's not like North Face are the ones you look at, and they're like, okay, that's the epitome of a of an a, a, a Supreme collaboration. But then you'll come across they'll do a collaboration with like a a pocket knife, not Swiss Army, but there's these other pocket knife brands that have been around for like a hundred years from France. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Like Supreme really cool. will like make a machete. Yeah, well, like they did a, a Supreme Oreo yeah. collaboration. Um, who yeah. did it recently? North Face Gucci did a collaboration. I mean, yes. the and 
that collaboration is another one you can't get your hands on. Mm -hmm. a lot of random ass like, collaborations. What about <laughs> Paul George with Nike and PlayStation? You yeah, remember? that was really cool. You, you, you remember that? No. Paul George Those shoes, shoes were sick. Nike and PlayStation. A three-way collaboration with an NBA player, PlayStation, and Nike. It's like Travis, Travis Scott and McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. Like a chicken nugget I actually nugget did pillow. not see that one. Yeah, no. You Travis did not Scott. see the collaboration or yeah. you didn't see it coming? No, no, no. I mean both. Yeah. I've actually Travis, got… Travis Scott and yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, what do you do? Burger, like, yeah. like they made like a, a combo. I don't remember what it is. It's just like a… Can I get a number eight? The yeah. Travis Scott there was combo? A, yeah, yeah. Like there was that? A, a Travis Scott yeah. set. But then there was, there was uh, clothing that came… I've got a Travis Scott… A t-shirt that's got McDonald's on it. There's a chicken nugget <laughs> pillow. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't see that. I saw some guy unboxing a, a Travis Scott chicken nugget pillow the other day. Interesting. It, it's just like if you don't collaborate anymore, it almost seems like your brand is… Doesn't irrelevant. Have, yeah. Well, irrelevant, <laughs> but also like in terms of survival. Mm. As a fashion, a, a fashion label yourself, whereas mm -hmm. being involved in a fashion label… That's obviously something you've got to be conscious of as well. Of course, of course. I think um, collaborations are always really cool because you can kind of cross market each other. Um, and I think, which is why, like, you know, Carhartt reaches out to Converse. And I think Carhartt works with a lot of, it, it works with a lot of other brands because of the material that they initially use. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't… It's Their general style and everything is not… It doesn't, it's not in your face. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to That's collaborate. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like denim, right? It's like collaborating yeah. with Levi's almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you had the option of collaborating with any label or any company… Nike. JC yeah. Penney's? <laughs> <laughs> not… <laughs> Sears? <laughs> Nike would be your… Roses? <laughs> Ross. Remember Roses? Yeah. Ross. Wow. Nike is a perfect answer, especially if you're doing the golf stuff. Ni yes, Nike. Nike. Yes. What, why? I really love the way they market their products and I really do enjoy their products myself. Mm -hmm. um, I love sneakers, which is also why. I, I, all I wear is Nike. You know? <laughs> Me and my friend, me and Gabe were walking around together the other day and he goes, why are we such Nike boys? Because we're wearing like all Nike. And I was like, I, love Nike. I hate that you said I that, do. but I, you're right. Like, I love Nike. I do. Love I, it do awesome? I do. I do. I honestly, I have one pair of Adidas that I cannot wear. I just cannot wear it. Like, I don't want to diss Adidas, but I just absolutely love. I hear uh, you. I always want to wear my cool like Adidas jacket and but I can't because I always want to wear my Nike shoes yeah. more than I want to wear. And, and you don't you can't ever mix want those. To, to mix them up. I okay. do it all the time. No, 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 no. Okay, my Adidas okay. jacket is so what, cool, though. What's a bigger fashion faux pas? Is it to mix sporting brands, okay. or is it to wear one of the, like everything of the same sporting brand? Honestly, I don't like mix and matching. But uh, you, but it's okay to wear a pair of Nike shoes with Nike socks, with Nike pants, a Nike sweatshirt, and a exactly. Nike t-shirt, a Nike hat. That's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so, you so should this, see, I actually this think right that here looks is bothering you. Yeah. <laughs> see, I can't look at you right now. <laughs> I do see <laughs> that face. That's um, usually they make a meme out of my face. That's the <laughs> memeiest, dreamiest, <laughs> memeiest face I've ever seen. Here's my thing. I do. Th I. I find it a little awkward to see like Adidas, Adidas socks and Nike shoes. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's a lot more obnoxious to see someone wearing like Nike hat, head to toe, all Nike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so cringe. Yeah. For me, that's just like, dude, just relax with that. You're walking just, bad. Unless, unless yeah. it's like a piece. <laughs> like if it's something real, but is really the, is there is there ever a piece like that? For no, me, I mean, like I, the thing is, like when a guy has Nike tracksuit on with Nike socks and it's exposed, I think it's hot. It's sexy. But if he has another Nike hat on, it's kind of questionable. Nike tracksuit. Yeah. Yeah, but a Nike. Okay, a Nike tracksuit. A oh. Nike tracksuit with Nike shoes. Okay, Tra that's probably my limit. But if he's got socks pulled up over the the pants with a Nike logo and then a Nike hat, it's just like. Dude, just relax. Mm. That just yeah, it, it's too much. Like I, it, I don't know. It, no, I, I mean can, if it was Adidas, maybe. Can we go back? <laughs> to, then it would be too much. Maybe no, wait, wait, wait. Can we go much. back to tracksuits though? Yeah. <laughs> Adidas is tracksuits. Adidas is tracksuits. Nike tracksuits. That's so, Nike's good at like basketball. 
products. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you seen those flight tracksuits that mm-hmm. Jordan used to wear in the like in the 90s Come that around. are making a comeback? Mm-hmm. Like uh, they're iconic. And yeah, and but that's can, Jordan. But they're still Nike tracksuits. And I think like some of those tracksuits, if you only wear the top and, and you, if you mix and match those, they look really whack. Like yeah. you kind of have to wear them as a set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you watch The Last Dance, the like documentary about Michael Jordan that came out? I didn't get to finish it, but I did watch it and I… It's a good one. It's so good. You know when you he's in France, it. that outfit that he's wearing when they like show him… Not when he's wearing the beret, but they show him oh in France. Oh my god, he looks so hot He looks beret. so cool when he, he got to so France. so cool. That like purple, like almost like tie-dye shirt that yeah. he was wearing mm-hmm. when he pulled up. But you, those tracksuits that he's wearing in that series, like if you get on eBay now and look for them or you go to a vintage store and you can get the ha- your hands on them, they're like $2,000 a pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they've become like the ultimate in, in vintage tracksuits. Yeah. yeah. There's such a big market for them and there's such a big demand for them. And yeah. and I mean, you know, you cringe you cringe about tracksuits. I know my European brothers can relate. Adidas tracksuits are the sh- The only… Yeah. The only… Adidas ones you're going to wear are the three stripes. Yeah. The yeah. classic ones. And, and that's what I'm I, saying. Those look good though. But with the Nike ones as well, it's the classics. Yeah. yeah. The classic tracksuits are the ones you want to wear. All right. I like that you said Michael Jordan was hot too. I didn't realize it when I was younger, but that he is was hot. part of the reason why he was just such an icon is like, ladies loved him. He was right? so hot. Yeah. He was hot. Yeah. But what's going on with his eyes these days? Yeah. People said it's from drinking too much, right? He's got like the yeah, whites of his eyes are kind of yellow. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's from drinking. It's, it's, it's like it's liver, like, liver disease. Kind he's of. like watching like old footage all day, and just like <laughs> drinking whiskey. He's like watching people that like got over on him like one time in basketball, staring at the screen, hating them. Oh man, that's when it got personal. Yeah, oh, that's when I got personal. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest fashion faux pas for you? I really like I said um, earlier. I don't like it when people are very logo heavy and when they mix it up, you know? It's a pet peeve of mine. It's like you get to a stage in life and brands like Nike and if you wear a big logo on, it's like I'm paying $50 for a Mm t-shirt and I'm promoting this company. (laughs) <laughs> it's like shit. They should be paying me fifty dollars to yeah. wear this shit more down the street. Well, they probably do pay you. They sometimes. probably do pay you. They don't. That's the. They just give me stuff for free, and it's like, big logos for me on, on t shirts is mm-hmm. is I can't do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. What about what about brown belt black shoes, brown shoes black belt? Oh, that's that's a tough one. It has to be a very nice deep brown. Yeah. And like a almost like chocolatey kind of brown. So it can be done. It can be done very tastefully, but mm. it's hard. Yeah. What about Tom and Jerry t-shirts? I think they're cool. I think they're cool. Yeah. <laughs> it says Tom Ford on it. Oh, is, is that that's a Tom cool. Ford shirt? It's a collaboration. It's not a Tom Ford. No, mm. it's there's a, a brand called Chinatown Market, and mm-hmm. they kind of do. They do the basketballs, right? Yeah, yeah. but it, it's originated as like. Um, in New York, there's Chinatown and the market there was kind of like rip off of Gucci and, you mm-hmm. know, they'd, they'd rip off the fashion labels. So they've started a streetwear brand where they're ripping off like Gucci and whatnot. Mm. And it's kind of parroting those kind of shirts. So… it's cool. I think they could be potentially the next Supreme. Oh, yeah. And I kind of like them. So I've been buying a lot of their stuff lately. Mm. What's the deal? Do, do they have to like pay Tom Ford to write f- not, Tom not Ford for, right not, across the- Not for this. How come? I, you can just in terms write of, in terms of a, in terms of a parody. Like, how can you, as a, in terms of a name, I'm pretty sure you can't copyright. There are certain things you can copyright, but I don't know how you can copyright a name like that. Um, they might actually have copyrights to it. Really? Sure yeah. If fishing, they're not Tom, as just Tom and Jerry too. Yeah, and and it has Tom and Jerry too. Yeah, so that's like double double trouble. <laughs> double trouble. Yeah, I mean. Copyrights, sh- Tom and Jerry, sure, but like in terms of a name, <sighs> yeah, probably. I mean, no, but like the yeah. characters and everything. I'm, I'm sure they have copyrights for yeah, that. But uh, absolutely, usually the thing is, um, I don't think this brand. I, I don't really. I'm not aware of this brand, but mm. it might not be as big yet. But once they do, kind of pop off, and Tom and Jerry, like, the, is it Disney or Cartoon Networks? It's a uh, uh, Hanna Barbera. Uh, what, what is it? 
Warner Brothers. Oh, was it Warner Hanna Brothers? Hanna Barbera. I don't know. Warner Brothers, Han- maybe. No, it's not Hanna yeah. Barbera. That's like Jetsons and stuff. Oh my I God, think. I still love Jetsons. Yeah, yeah. Jetsons and Flintstones. Yes, I love it. You know, Jetsons it's and Flintstones. crazy because we're living the Jetsons life right now. Almost. There's so many robots and like yeah. things that we <sighs> I don't are, have a robot like, made yet, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we're worried about vacuum cleaner? You we could. Don't, she you was can. Hot. You can. She was yeah. thick. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that robot made? <laughs> robot made was thick as shit. The robot made in the Jetsons was <laughs> thick. <laughs> she was. I mean, our, our robots, really, the thing is like we don't have faces on all these like robots, but we are ultimately utilizing all these like, you know, um, technology like there, there is like the automatic vacuum cleaners mm. like in yeah. in the Jetsons. I mean, like, smartphones are yeah, crazy. yeah, it's smartphones. Like it, yeah. It's like Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy had the the watch he could talk into. Like yeah, it, yeah. it's getting like that more and more. Yeah, yeah it is. Awesome. I was just watching uh, the Jetsons. That's why on Where? YouTube. <laughs> oh, on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You got to watch the Flintstones then the Jetsons to really appreciate it though. It's yeah, like yeah, but Yeah, Flintstone is. Yeah, it's probably like when we're like our childhood mm-hmm. and yeah. we're literally in Judson right now. So, do you think that all of these advancements are making us happier? Uh, As yeah, a species, it's like I say, I, pros I, and cons. Who, who are you asking? <laughs> well, whoever wants to speak up. What are you asking? Do you think that all of these techno- like advances in no. technology are making us happier? I say no. Yeah. I think it's uh, making us lazier and I think it's making us more socially inept. But it's also making us a little bit more… It's easier to communicate. It's easier to get your thoughts out there. It's also yeah. easier to promote yourself. It's also easier to get information. information I'm pretty sure yes. people are way more aware of things and general information. Mm-hmm. More than they were in 20 years ago. Then we had to go to a library to look up… You know… But, but you if know, I do to miss a, going to the library though. I miss my library card. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The, the you know like there's like this like romantic idea of like the agricultural revolution where like oh human beings like really figured out how to like take certain seeds and plant stuff that we'll need and that made it so that we never starved and all this stuff and it actually was like maybe better when we weren't stuck to a specific place and we did have like a purpose every single day like you go out every day you kill something you eat it and you bring it back home and you can move if the weather sucks or whatever but like There's like an argument that like us getting stuck in one place is actually making us more and more depressed. Hell no. I don't want to grow my corn. (laughs) (laughs) Out of your mind? You don't even like it. He doesn't even know that's going to order food. Are you out of your mind? That's what I'm saying. This is so awesome. Like Dave was talking about information, but it's what's it also has allowed is the spread of misinformation. Mm. Yeah. People's opinions. Okay, we can now be opinionated, but it doesn't mean we're having great opinions that we can put out there in public. And it's, they're probably pretty misinformed opinions. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think there's there's obviously a positive to everything, but there's also a lot of negatives. And I find that we're we're becoming a lot more social online. We're missing out on personal interaction. I mean, with everything that's going on with COVID at the moment, I think the one thing, and we've talked about it personally, is the one thing we're missing most in our lives is physical interaction with people and going out and being able to socialize, not just holding hands, but being able to, you know, meet with a group of five people or more, you know, it's not happening. And, but that's kind of the direction technology is taking us as well. It's like, let's get on Zoom and have a beer. Yeah. It's not as much fun, is it? You know, I kind of, those are the things I miss. And when we make it easier for people, people are less inclined to actually do it. I'm cool with it. (laughs) <laughs> I like it. I love technology. You guys know me. I love oh yeah. Technology. And but and that's but you just, like it too, man. I do, but I also think we've we've taking it. I know what you're I, saying. I, I, I know what you're saying. We're not. We're too, too willing to accept it without sort yeah. of thinking what are the, what are the disadvantages that we're also taking with but on I mean, board with this. If it wasn't a good thing, technology wouldn't keep advancing, and people wouldn't keep going this down this road. I mean, but you have the, to really think about it. When the PS, who was looking for a PS5 when it came out? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Say me, <laughs> say me. Yeah, I, I, I still am. I'm guilty I'm looking, as charged. I'm getting on the internet every day yeah, and looking at the go. price changes. Here but we go. Is is there going to be a bubble? Is the bubble going to burst? Are we going to say wake up one day and say we've taken technology too far? We've seen it happen in movies. We've seen it happen play out in different books and and whatnot. I I agree to it to some extent. If I may, I do think that 
um, because we have this technology. Like I heard somebody say that people were people nowadays are way more. Um, there's people are way more ignorant now than they used to be. People in 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 there's a lot more hatred out there, like in the, on the internet and internet and everything. But I think mm-hmm. that. There's always been yeah. that hatred, but now the morons have a, a platform, platform to vocalize yeah. what they're thinking. So but I think that's a negative. It's also the information. When you get on something like Facebook, a lot of the information you're getting on a platform like that is information you want to read about anyway. You're only getting one side of the picture more often than not. Mm. Yeah. Because of the algorithms and whatnot. So you're not getting the big picture, a lot of what's happening on the internet more often than not. Yeah. Which is where it's becoming misinformation for a lot of people and you're getting, you know, even look at the media. You've got the left and the right. There's not many media outlets that are taking the middle ground and saying, let's give you an a balanced opinion of what's happening in the news. Yeah, because that's no fun. That's not a news. Well, and it's, it's not newsworthy. getting it's not getting you the ratings. Yeah, they do the exactly. fact checking now on some of the social media sites, they do, which is they cool. Do. You've seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, so, I like it. some of these like dead friends of mine who just like post everything that they see, like repost that like mm. they don't actually know if it's true. Right. You like look dumb as fuck now if you do that because they'll literally write like this has been fact checked and there are like four lies right. <laughs> in this post. Don't believe it. But it's still, but like on their timeline, people like that, they tend to, that's pretty much all they're getting on their time. They're not getting an, another opinion. Yeah. That's the way it, it's team tends to be working these days. But you know, I, I do um, agree with you completely. But on the other hand, I think we do benefit from technology too. So I think it has its pros and cons, really. You know, like you said, we have, I mean, like you said, we have access to information. But on the other hand, because we have constant access to information, people don't go um, to libraries or anymore mm. or, or go uh, beyond and put in the effort to actually study. So what they do is just Google it. They can either be misinformed and learn some, something or educate themselves in a not, um, I guess, like legitimate way. So they're, they are getting misinformed. So I think it has its pros and cons. But, you know, I think, again, everything has to do with balance. And I think everything um, has to do with like control in life, right? I think like for me, um, I try to limit myself from being on the internet for too long Mm. or being on the device for too long or relying on technology um, too much. So Mm. I kind of learn how to live without my my phone and my devices. Is this an exercise you do? Yes, I do. What about like right when you wake up? Right when I wake up, I used to honestly… I used to go on my phone for an hour and I would, like time would fly. I'm I'm, literally, I would, I used to be sucked into it where I'm like, oh my God, I wake up at nine. It's already 10. Like, what the hell did I do? So what I do now is I tell myself after I get all my morning routine in, that's when I can be on Instagram for like five minutes Mm -hmm. or check my emails and stuff like that. And I think for me, because I train myself to do that, I'm a lot more efficient, happier. And I feel like i um, in charge of myself. Instead of reacting to things. Exactly. You're facing them head on at your t- at your own time. Yes, exactly. But it, it was really hard for me to identify it and then train myself to, to kind of get out of that. Yeah. Especially if you like turn on your phone and you have bad news. Or like 20 different emails that uh, you don't want to respond to. Straight ruins your day yeah. from yeah. the get-go. But like even back to the device and, and, and searching for answers, I, it used to be you'd, you'd go to the pub or you'd be out for dinner and you'd be having a conversation and someone would say, oh, do you remember seeing such and such in, in such a movie? What, shit, what was that movie again? And you'd, people would be going backwards and forwards and trying to remember the movie. Nowadays, everyone would just be on their phone and they'd be like searching the actor and they're like, was it this one, this one, this yeah. one? And it's just like… You've got the answer in three minutes. All I of like a shit that's not Googleable. Well, that's the th- but that's the thing. Like before, it was Google Googleable. You'd have a conversation. It'd be a random yeah. shit conversation, but you could converse about it. Now you'd get the answer, and you're like, okay, done. Yeah, <laughs> you've concluded the conversation. Where do you go now? Yeah, 
I got a I got a postcard in the mail in college. And the person forgot to write their name on it. Mm-hmm. And I actually was like so refreshed that I couldn't Google who sent me the f-ing card. <laughs> like, because my first, like, my first reaction was like, oh, I'm just going to like look it up. Who sent mm. me this? But you can't look up who sent your f-ing card. It made me miss letters. They didn't even write the address on it. Yeah. No, no, they did. But I still couldn't tell who it was. They didn't have their name on it. It was like someone, one of my friends who was traveling on vacation. Oh, from a ho- like there. You can actually holiday. put it on your Instagram. And I'm sure they'll yeah, DM now. you now. This is when I was in college, though. <laughs> this is a long time ago. I'm just saying it's nice to have shit that you can't right. look up. But that's like internet. when you go and see a movie and there's no conclusion. Yeah. It becomes like a conversation piece with people right. you, for two or three weeks. If everyone's seen it, you're like, so how did you think the movie finished? With when you get a postcard like that, you can envision that being half a dozen friends and it, but, it kind of your imagination mm-hmm. goes wild with that a bit. Right. I, I mean, I do definitely see technology affecting people's, I guess, emotions in a way mm. because I feel like people are becoming like emotionless, you yep. know, they're not as… Um, Everything has to be so immediate. Reactive. Yeah. You know, people aren't as reactive, if anything. Yeah. So it is kind of. Dave's got a very emotionless face <laughs> right now. So everyone just usually becomes like this, right? <laughs> he's not, he's not emotionless at all, though, right? You, you're, you like live in the internet in a cra- in a cool way. Like you have like cr- real relationships with he's people. He's actually got on an, the internet. He actually has an outlet that he connects himself to the internet. <laughs> Oh, you do. You have like I mean, real they, community. But, but with me though, I mean, my my career is based on the internet, and yeah. with my content, I'm not just making content that's just you know clickbait. And shit. I'm, I'm actually making like language and culture based and shit. Friends. You know, and friends. I have people from across friends from across the world that I use, keep in touch with on Discord. I connect with my audience on Twitch. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, and especially, I don't use the internet as a way to, I guess, promote myself more than I use. It to, um, I guess, try to um, set a mark in my own little history in the world. And I know that even 50 years from now, the shit I make and the stuff I do will help somebody mm-hmm. either get to know a new culture or a new language. So, I mean, and in terms of technology, I love it. I, I'm in love with technology. I think it's, I mean, the sky's the limit. Back in the day, you used to have to pay thousands of dollars to a music producer in the 80s, even until the 2000s. Now I have a really nice setup, sound card. I have a couple of mics. Everything's just right there if I want. I don't have to be at anybody's disposal. Mm. I, I Everything I can control. Right. And I mean, I think the beauty of the internet is really making the world feel a lot smaller than mm. it really is. Yep. But again, be, um, after the pandemic, you know, it's… For me, like, I feel like, wow, like, this world is huge. Like, because everything that I was able to do before, like, I was able to just, you know, fly out to see my parents or friends in Indonesia, just, you know, go to take a nap and I would be able to see them immediately. But now it just feels like they're so distant and they're living in, you know, a different world, you know? And even like in terms of environment, like New York or, you know, somewhere in Europe and in Korea, like the world that we're living in now is like completely different. I mean, it's a pandemic though. Yeah. But I mean, we have to think technology. I mean, let's say this happened 40 years ago. You couldn't FaceTime. You couldn't see your family. You wouldn't have any access to seeing your own mother and father's face. 40 years ago, we'd probably all be dead though. Okay. um, (laughs) Anyways. 40 years ago, you were alive as Medical, in terms of medically, we probably, we'd all just have died from it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, think about it. Like kids are getting their education on Zoom and everything. I mean, that's yeah. so cool. The, the things There's, that people are getting done in this horrible situation. I don't think technology is the issue. I think it's just how we're at times, we're so willing to accept it without questioning putting limitations on parts of it. Uh, I think, of course, you have to put limitations. You know, I, I even, absolutely agree. like I think, there are some establishments that have started setting up like they put a like a container on the table at a restaurant where you put your phones in because you go to restaurants and people are spending time on their phone and it's kind of like you you going out and have a meal with someone and if you're spending $50 on a meal 
you want to be able to sit down and have a conversation. I'm trying to socialize with you. Yeah. Wow, they actually have a container to place your phone there in. Are, there are establishments. I haven't been to them. I've heard about them. Um, and then there's the phone game too. So you should bring, you know, you always have that one friend that's always on the phone. Oh, that's the phone. That's where the phone game comes in. The Wait, first person everyone, that picks hey, up you know phone, that? Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. You explain. You just like everyone who's going out to eat, you put your phone in the middle of the table. You like stack them all up and mm-hmm. whoever touches their phone first has to pay, pay for dinner. Okay, no. So. Yeah. Yeah, really? It's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I've, do I've it. Had, I've had that happen. <laughs> yeah. But these guys are actually like, I'm… I, I, when I'm hanging out with you, I'm never on my phone. Never. I'm just defending technology, but I I am never on my phone. Mm. The last dinner we had, we didn't look at our phones once. I know. I don't. I don't ever look at my phone. But yeah. we were know. crying. But when I work, it has to be technology. You know. Yeah. Right. Like it. I, I have no choice. Oh, we did look at our phones just when you pulled up the letter from your the teacher. letter from my teacher. Yeah. And then you cried for the. Yeah. And then my minutes. tears were falling onto his phone because it was yeah. so touching. Is it waterproof? Yeah, he's got a… Look like, at the technology. He's got a waterproof phone and all. Yeah, even this big crocodile tear. Oh, two phones. <laughs> Do you have two phones? Yeah. I got S20 and an Ultra and the iPhone. I, I'm, I'm going to… get Getting off technology just briefly. I wanted to ask you about this before, but mm-hmm. we got into technology too quickly. <laughs> Fashion faux pas. Mm-hmm. White socks with a suit. White <laughs> socks with suits. Come oh. on, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yo, why do Korean people think that black socks are so f- funny? Black socks? Yeah, Korean people make fun of people for wearing black socks. Oh not like gosh. this kind of black socks. Yes, they do. Just straight up black socks. Really? Really? Maybe not anymore, but it was I a don't thing. I who you're hanging out with. Bro. That was a real thing. Somebody back me up with this. I remember red socks. No, no. Nope. I've never heard that before. What are you talking about? My friend about? Jung-young, when I first moved to Korea… Well, your friend Jung young people, a weirdo. Just say, just say <laughs> your friend Jung young no, but then I, I asked my girlfriend about it too. She's like, yeah, people people well, used to talk friend, shit about… your friend Chung Young. Black That's two socks. people. What? That's two people. Okay. Out of like not 40 million people. I don't, I don't ever remember anybody ever saying anything critical about people with black socks. Okay. Somebody talk about it in the comments. I'm sure it's not just me. White socks and a suit. And, I and, think… And like, um, you know, black shoes. Black leather shoes. I don't like it. It looks, it looks off. Just doesn't, with it, black it look, shoes? It makes you yeah, look like, like a… Magician. <laughs> like when I grew up, it was when I grew up. It, it was if you wear a suit and black leather shoes, uh-huh. you generally you generally wear black socks. Black socks, those mm-hmm. thin like business yeah. black socks. Business yeah. socks. Yeah, and you you match your belt. Yeah. That was kind of what yeah. I was told growing up. That's right. But then I've started seeing a lot of men wearing white socks with that attire and that shoe, and it's just like. Wow. If they're brand spanking new white socks, then it's okay, right? Yeah, yeah and if they're pulling I, I a bunny so. out of their hat, it's still… It's, it's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I, just, is, I think there's a brand called Amy Leon Dore. Uh, I do, do they, know the brand, yeah. Do, do they have white socks with suits? I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't really noticed suits that they've made. Like I know they make a lot of casual wear. Yeah, but they also… Are, they actually have suits too. And I think I've seen them with white socks. And if it's that look, I think mm-hmm. it's pretty dope. But if it's not… And what That wasn't… Yeah, it, it wasn't… That wasn't… Like, just, just kind of the average mm-hmm. Joe Blow kind of wearing white socks to work. I'm, I'm thinking even in Korea where they have those uh, baggy… Those baggy black slacks that cut off around here. And mm-hmm. they always have the black socks and the… You know, like kind of like high, high tops, water, high, high, high shoes. water pants. Yeah, and I just I've, I don't, I can't ever think of seeing people with white socks, even in Korean, where Korean fashion is, you know, for me like white white socks are something you wear with sneakers. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've ever worn worn white white socks with a pair of leather shoes. What a nightmare! Yeah, this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like I said. No, it was a good question, but I but know. no, 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 I wasn't insulting you. I just we we have on no conclusion to-, to this. On the topic know? of fashion, I'd like to point out that Saul would like to. Uh, he'd like to say that he is a fan of your pants. Oh, thank I, you. Yeah, those are really cool. Thank I was you. so confused when I first saw you. Though. I was like, <laughs> Are they shorts or pants? I was like, What's going? Oh, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit confusing. Did you yeah. make those? No, I didn't. They're from Y Projects. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never seen that. They're like yeah. cowboy pants for Yeah, women. actually I was I was kind of contemplating if I should wear my cowboy hat, but I was like maybe it's yeah. not much. So they are supposed to be like cowboy? Uh I guess shirt? it's supposed to be a little bit inspired by that silhouette. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Were you gonna ride a horse then? 
<laughs> Somebody had to say it. Jeez. No. Nobody, nobody had to that. say it. Look. Hey, I said I'm not I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of saying same. things. Huh? There was a dude in my hometown who would ride around on a white horse. No way. Where yeah, are you I'm from? from North Carolina. Uh was that he, explains. Was he like yeah. was he like the university mascot? No, he was just like this cool, like uh majestic. Was he a magician? Dude. Did he have long really? blonde hair? Yeah. No, he was actually a Native American. Oh, oh okay, wow. Okay. And he would cool. just, That's and dope. he would, his like son went to the pool with us. That was his mode of transportation. He rode everywhere on a That's white tight. horse. Yeah, That's it was nice. really cool. In That's winter cool. as and well? And he was fucking jacked up too. In winter That's as tight. well? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Dude, that's some. That's some sex appeal. That's some energy. Yeah, but it was really cool. Do, uh, do you do that with your products? You have. You can click it, and there's like the price and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You do that. Uh-huh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I was wondering too. It looks like Instagram seems to like block. They don't show those posts as much, right? Um. I. You know what? I think they do somewhat. Um. Kind of filter it. Filter right? it. But I. I mean. But haven't they changed to allow the like? Traditionally, it was they didn't allow you to have to to sell your products on Instagram. It was kind of almost like as a medium just to advertise and draw people to your website. Yeah. I think now they've tried to incorporate it because people were getting off Instagram. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, the thing is, this is I don't know if this is gonna. You know what? Let me answer your question first. I don't think I have fully taken advantage of uh, technology in terms of promoting my fashion brand and um, everything that I do, I think I can be a little more diligent and take more advantage of it. But if anything, even though I'm in e-commerce, I this, something that I really want to work on is getting photos um, of the products almost as if they can um, see it and experience it in person. Because one thing that I'm kind of against is fast shopping, right? Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed what people do… I mean, I thank God it's not with my brand. We didn't really have a lot of returns. But one of the things that I've kind of seen people do is order a whole bunch of stuff and then return it. Yeah. And the reason why… It's not just about returning, but it's really… No, it's not… It's not… It's not… Sizing, but like just for the environment, like for trucks and even like airplanes and all these logistic companies, right? If they're because there's free returns, they would mm. order whatever they want and then return it. But I don't think like people wear it are, one time and then no, send no, it back? no, 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 not not that, but just trying it on. There's and then, no onus on like because the delivery is free. It's just like I'll just order it and then yeah, and then see if, see I, if I like, I like it, or it or not, and then return it. Yeah, and I think one of the thing that's one of the things I really don't like about online shopping is because. I, I don't think people are aware that these things are not flying, you know, yeah. without any mm. like fuels or without any oil or gas. You know, it's really polluting the the air, you carbon know. Footprint. So yeah, we're leaving a lot of carbon carbon footprint. And I think that's something that's been bothering me about online shopping. I don't think people are aware of that. So I mean, even though I am a, a shop owner and an e-commerce e-commerce owner. I think um, I would like, you know, any of my like potential customers to be aware that, you know, like whatever they do purchase, I want them to be selective with what they do purchase. Mm-hmm. Not just because mm-hmm. of my returns or or wherever they shop, but, you know, just to be aware that, you know, they are leaving a lot of carbon footprint. Yeah. Does the majority of your sale come from… Sales come from like Instagram or? I think, yeah. Honestly, I think it does come from my Instagram page itself. Um, But we do get in some uh, foot traffic. I mean, we were closed for a while because of COVID. But now that we are open, we are, you know, taking advantage of our showroom. Do you guys do international? Yes, we do. Uh, Are are most of your buyers primarily Korean or international? I think 70%. Is Korean and um, the remaining cool. thirty is international. Cool, cool. Yeah. Are you on Instagram personally? Yes, I am. So would you She's say popping on Instagram? Well, would you say you <laughs> utilize your personal Instagram more than your 
uh, labels Instagram? Um, for now, I have. But honestly, it's weird because even though I am… It kind of seems like… It just kind of seems like you're kind of torn between… On it, it's technology to, to it kind is. of use it or not use it. You know, the thing is, if it wasn't for technology, I wouldn't be where I am. Mm-hmm. But my, if it wasn't my line of work, if I didn't have to do what I do, I don't think I would be an internet personality. I don't think I would be an Instagram personality. Like I, I'm actually very private, even though I love sharing my story and connecting with people. I think I'm better at doing that when it's more in a personal setting in a in a more intimate setting than me like i i have prob like i have trouble talking to myself on the camera or you know i i it's hard for me to engage with my followers when i don't have them in front of me mm-hmm. so when i do have um some of my fans visit me at the cafe or the showroom it's kind of cool to see who i'm actually um interacting with online. So I think that's really cool about the space. Yeah. I'm like only able to be in front of a camera like this when I'm like with people I uh-huh. like, you know. Uh-huh. I cuz it seems like some like for like it's forced. Forced, right? Yeah, just me to a camera. It, it's trying hard to... and and your personality can't come out, right? Yeah. So you're saying you hate yourself. <laughs> no, I just oh, you know you said I you're hate only, talking to myself. You said you can only do it with people you like. <sighs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I like me too. I can't, I'm just checking. I just feel like strange talking to him. like he turns the way he turns on when he like can, was doing a YouTube video. It's like he's actually talking to somebody, you know. And I'm, it, I'm I the, had to I had to be next to him to kind of like to do the same, you know. I'm the same. Like I uh, people like Dave that can take a camera and sit it down in a restaurant and talk to the camera like they're not a crazy person. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. I admire that. I feel like it's I'm, cool. Yeah. I'm like, what do I say now? <laughs> this, this not, I'm not getting any reaction. And I guess it's just practice. You've been doing it for so long you know, now. I'm first generation YouTube. You know, I've been doing yeah. it forever. So even like live now. But actually what's funny is before I started doing live, I wasn't very good at talking. I was the opposite. I couldn't… I could only film when it was just me in a room alone with yeah. a camera. Wow. But now that I, you know, did, I'm doing Twitch and stuff. It's… Yeah. Uh, I can kind of do everything. <laughs> You're, you're good. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah but yeah, at first I, I could only be alone. I that's, could only film alone. That's, yeah. That's pretty cool though. Like if I… I tried vlogging by myself. Oh my god. It was so hard. It's that's what I, what I, I saw. I, yeah. Yours. Like I, I don't think my personality fully comes out when mm. I'm alone. Because like even filming the show, right? It was kind of hard for me because… Um, I would have to voice. I'm very quiet by myself usually. Like I'm not somebody somebody that really talks to myself. I would talk to myself, but in my head. Yep. Not, like I wouldn't vocalize it. But I think that was like one of the hardest things. But it it was a lot. It was a little easier because I started practicing through my vlogs. But when I first started, I needed a guest. I needed a companion to interact mm-hmm. with. Yeah. Which is why I think some of my um, YouTube videos, the ones that really did well was when I am interacting with someone. Yes, yeah. I, I think it's… People have a, a concept of, of different… Um, I guess different jobs. When you look at comedians, there are some comedians that are very good at sketch comedy. Some are great at improv. Some are great at stand-up. Yeah. But then you also have some comedians that aren't funny at all. But what they're really good at is coming up with ideas. Mm. Some are really great writers, but they're not great at doing comedy on the spot. And it's the same in in different industries. You yeah. have people, even MCs, that can just talk and host a show by themselves. But then there are other people who are better at being a sidekick <laughs> or, or or being off on the side in the wings. It, it We've become so accustomed to saying, I guess it's, giving titles to people. And if you give them a title, you think they're an all-rounder. Yeah, but that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, remember me on TV. He can tell you firsthand. I am not, not good on TV. Really? I but you could not. be. No, I can't. You just I, don't like being told like what to do. You no, like being in not, charge I'm of just, it, no? When there's 30 freaking cameras staring at me and there's like a mic on me and there's a camera yeah. up here and here and there's like a little GoPro up there. And they're like, be funny on the spot. I'm like, I… Duh. 
I can't. <laughs> yeah, I but can't I think, think. Uh, I think from I, I freeze up. what you have just said, though, you said you're used to working in front of a camera yeah. by yourself. Now you've started to develop to interacting live with an, uh, an online audience. Mm -hmm. You're gradually progressing and being able to work in a different environment. You can work up to it. Everyone can work up to it. It's yeah. just getting through that difficult stage yeah. that most people don't want to try. Right. It's getting out of the comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, believe it or not, I used to never take photos. So. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Never. Really? Yeah. I, your, two, your 200 and something thousand followers on Instagram would say otherwise. <laughs> no, I mean, but honestly. now she does. She's I saying. mean, now it's like, even if I come out as shit, like, I'm like, okay, whatever. Just how, take it after. How did you, how did you get over that? Um, I just had to suck it up and just do it. Honestly, like, my fear was um, looking at a photo and not liking it mm -hmm. and having it, um, having other people see it. And I felt so insecure about that. Like whether it's my eyes closed or if I had like a double chin or anything, I just felt so insecure that I used to just like refuse to take photos. And I remember like fighting with my friends when they had like the digital camera. Like my friend just bought a digital camera and she like took a photo of me and I'm like, delete it. Yeah. Delete it. And she's like, why? Like I, I like this photo. I'm going to keep it. I'm like, no, it's a picture of me. So I want you to delete it now. And we yeah. really got into an argument. And that's how insecure I was. And I think I just kind of outgrew it. I just accepted the fact that you can't look perfect all the time. Even if you don't look perfect all the time, that's just me. You yeah. know, if I can look good sometimes, sometimes I won't, you know. But just accepting me for who I am that day, I think… Mm -hmm. It took a really long time, but it made me realize like I was a lot happier with myself. I didn't have to look perfect and pretty all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a realistic standard to it's hold not. yourself to. Exactly. It's, it's very unhealthy too. It's yeah. really unhealthy. I, mean, I hate when I see people's Instagram like… And they always turn their head the exact same way. Oh, the they same. Always have, like, the <laughs> yeah. They always have the camera held in the same place. It's uh -huh. like, oh, I hate when it's really good friends of mine too. And I, yeah. oh, I'm just like… I, like oh, I know. You don't, you don't look like that. I mean, you, don't send them a, you don't send them a DM? Oh, I don't and just know. let them know. I'm not like, going to ruin their day. They're just trying to look nice for the camera. I'd rather… The way I usually deal with that, if it's somebody that I'm friends with, I'm like, you look, you look really good. You don't have to… Try to change it. Mm. Man, I said that and they just kept doing it. So, yeah. I've actually said that before and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I love you just the way you are. No, I like one of my really close oh, buzz, right? Um, was he photoshopping he, himself? No, he wasn't photoshopping, <laughs> but he was using like all these apps, right? And filters, yeah. And filters. Yeah. And honestly, like, the thing is, like, he has like a very cool personality, like, cool style, like, mm -hmm. he's very cultured, right? But with this filter, it took… It washed all that away. Yeah. Thank you. I have a friend and she's so pretty on camera. But the photos she puts on Instagram… She's such a good friend and of mine. And they like cut your whole fucking and it's, shit she off. She looks so much better in, like in… Yeah. In, I mean I'm guilty of like filters too. But, yeah there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I, I mean I think… It takes like, away you. Yeah like the thing is like… I don't rely on it. That's I'm mean, like, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Like, Just a little touch in there. No, it's yeah. like, you know what? Maybe today I want to play around with my filters. Yeah. It's kind of like putting makeup on for me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes I want to put makeup on. Yeah. Sometimes I don't, you know? So for me, like filters, it kind of feel that way. It doesn't… Like for me, like I don't put makeup on every single day. Like sometimes even when I'm at my cafe, I'll look like right? And And I tell people, I'm like, hey, sorry. I'm having a busy day today. Like this is just how you're going to get me. Like, mm -hmm. this is it. And that's it. Um, and that's when I started realizing, like, I don't really, I don't want to live up to that beauty standard anymore. Like, yes, some, I'm wearing false eyelashes right now, but I've learned to like myself without it also. And I think I really want women to understand that they can or they are beautiful without all these things. These Little things that we do is just almost like a, a costume play. And like art. And, and art or yeah. just being festive. But you don't have festive. to do it. Like Christmas. Every day. Like sometimes yeah. I want to yeah. feel primped up. Sometimes yeah. I want to be lazy and just, you know, just be very natural. Slay queen. <laughs> Slay queen. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, 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 the fact that we've had to like society feels that they need to put all this pressure on, particularly women, mm-hmm. and and you know why can't you just put on a pair of slippers and wear your pajamas down to the convenience store? Oh, I do that all the time. You know, it's my favorite yeah. thing. I even go to Galleria like that. And oh, why yeah. shouldn't you? Why yeah, should why why it. why do you have yeah. to put I'm on like, a full no, face of makeup and and get your hair done and <laughs> You know, no, it, but then you know what? I feel like sometimes, like, I think there is a time and place for everything, yeah. right? Yeah, sometimes I feel like when people walk in with slippers, when it's not that kind of an occasion, I feel like it's disrespect. It's disrespect. Sometimes yeah. putting the effort just to show that you care, that you care yeah. and that you're being respectful, I think it's so nice to see. Mm-hmm. But then what I'm trying to say is you don't have to be perfect all the time. <laughs> You well, that's I, I. I grew up in a household where, um, like, my mother was involved in television and theater. So opening night on a theater, mm-hmm. and I'd be like ten years old, and I'd have to wear a tuxedo. Oh, like, I bet you looked cool. And and she'd be in. My mother would be wearing like a cocktail dress, and that was because she grew up in that environment. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah. you have to respect the theater, mm-hmm. and even that's if it awesome. wasn't opening night, she's like, I expect you to dress up to go to the theater. That's mm-hmm. just that's that was fun. just that's how awesome. she grew up. Yeah. Yeah. But also weddings and funerals. Right. But then I come here and you turn up at a wedding and people are in t-shirt and jeans and it's that's like… That's what I'm Cause saying. Because they, they had what? to pay to go. <laughs> but it's like that's… Un- in Australia, that's unheard yeah. of. Weddings. It's like you wear a suit and a tie to mm-hmm. a wedding. Yeah. Especially right. if it's someone you're close with. Right. And uh, honestly, for me, it was kind of a culture shock because I was born and raised in, in Queens, right? So when I went to a Korean wedding in Korea for the first time… I got dressed up and I went and everybody was like, oh, so are you trying to uh, steal the spotlight? I'm like… Somebody said that. No. Who said that? I was like, that's not not what I I was trying to be respectful. But I think it was honestly, I think it was really like a cultural thing. Yeah, but but Korean weddings, they're so… I mean, no, no, not this in Korean weddings, but they're so… It's so… It's like it's like factory. They just go in there. You're like, all right, cool. Get the reception. The wedding, here's your buffet, get the fuck out. That's like, <laughs> we have another wedding right after. Uh, like, that's I, how it works. I had to go and be like the MC of a wedding. Uh-huh. And it's they like, actually, the people that were running the event hall said, look, uh, the one before went overtime. We're going to have to get you to do it quickly. We need you in and out. We need you to finish it within 45 minutes. I'm like, oh my God. You're what? Wow. Like, it just blew my mind. It's just like it's a factory because yeah, they've got the factory, next group yeah. coming in. Those it's are the like, only concerts I've done all year. I've performed at two weddings. Nice. It was <laughs> so fucking awkward. Because <laughs> you know like a lot of those people like a lot of them are very old. You know everyone invites like every old person uh-huh. that their parents are friends with. Right. They aren't trying to hear me rap. <laughs> they probably don't know who you are and they've never heard a yeah. rap show before in their like, life. Yeah. Like why the hell did they invite this guy? <laughs> Still, yeah. as long as they get down. Yeah, before yeah. we wrap it up, can I ask a random ass question? Yes. You're not going to see this coming. But since I've been looking at your face all day, <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've bleached my hair before and stuff. Does eyebrow dyeing hurt? It actually doesn't. It's like a tattoo though, isn't it? Like a… Uh, dying? Dying? Like, uh, like when you get your hair… When you, like you know how you dye your hair? Uh-huh. You dye your eyebrows. Uh-huh. Does that hurt? It actually does not at all. dyeing your hair hurts. It burns. If you bleach it, it does. Yeah. But if you dye it, it doesn't hurt as much. Have you ever yeah. bleached your eyebrows? Does that hurt? Actually, I didn't bleach my eyebrows. But my hairstylist forgot to take it out a little… Um, yeah, she forgot to take it out. Uh, so, so they're not. That's, it, it's normally not this light. Okay, yeah, yeah that's but what it, was, it, it looked came pretty out a light. Yeah, it looks cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it looks cool, but I was wondering if that hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. All right, just, I thought people like do, are doing like the tattoo thing too. Uh, I just right? have too much eyebrows, which is why they always dye my eyebrows. That's, that's a good thing. That's though, not a bad it? thing. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing, especially yeah. in Korea, because you know the Korean eyebrow style for women is more of a thicker, like straight line. Eyebrow versus, you know, the American very thin mm. eyebrow. Don't the American women just shave them all off and draw them on? Not everybody. Uh, I, I think it I was think like a trend cut, at one point. I think I know what they do is they cut the top ends and make it… <laughs> just like, all right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about eyebrows now. Okay. Next week you'll see <laughs> Dave yeah, see. with bleached eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> We've already seen him without eyebrows. So yeah, I shaved my eyebrows. New. Yeah. Both? 
Yeah. But oh my god. But it was not even a long time ago. It was like was six months ago. <gasps> yeah. Up until like four months ago, I didn't have really? eyebrows. Yeah. He looked scary on the basketball yeah. court, like a demon. And you had to do this because it was a dare. Or? Yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was he it was looked a dare. like Voldemort. <laughs> uh, if there's anything you'd like to plug, now's the time to do it. <laughs> um. Actually. I I don't really have much to say. I think I've done a lot of my self promoting and okay. <laughs> everything that I'm working on. Um, just guys, where can we follow you on Instagram? Uh, my Instagram handle is silly world s y l l y world. Wow. Awesome! Yeah. Thanks also, so much for coming. Thank, thank you, you indeed. Also, if you want to watch this podcast in full, check us out on YouTube at the Dive Studios. You can find us on Instagram as well. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We ask that you leave us a generous review on Apple Podcasts, preferably five stars because they are oh so delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much and see you next time. All right, peace. Peace. Bye. Peace. Bye, guys. Thank you for the clothes. That's really sweet. Hope you enjoyed the clip. If you did, listen to the full episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, Dive Studios, and put those notifications on. Hit that bell. Boop, boop, boop.